Um, Nicole, I'm, I, we've seen these moves now. I mean, I think started with 1619 as a kind of focal point and critical race theory, but I'm curious to hear your response to watching it bloom, as it were, to Toni Morrison and the Bluest Eye and books about um, teen pregnancy and, you know, pornographic materials, et cetera. Uh, thank you for having me on and, and thank you for discussing this important topic because what we're seeing is not the sign of a healthy democracy at all, uh, but it is inevitable. Uh, it was easy for people, I think, to kind of look away when Republicans were only targeting the 1619 Project because maybe they didn't agree with the 1619 Project or they were uncomfortable with it. But if you are targeting any one work, um, it was never going to simply be about this one thing, and it was never simply going to be about race. So those of us who study these types of things knew that they were also going to eventually start coming for historical texts that they were going to start coming for texts about other marginalized groups. And that is exactly what we're seeing happening. It was inevitable. These laws are anti-democratic. As Tim Snyder says, what we're seeing now uh, is that a war on history is a war on democracy. You brought up the Osceola law, which I've read quite a bit. Of course, it bans the 1619, or not, I'm sorry, the, the guidance from Osceola um, in reference to the Florida law. It bans the 1619 Project. And then it asks, it says that history has to be factual and objective. And then it mandates that you can only teach the story of America that says we were a country founded, founded primarily on universal rights. So we see that these two things are antithetical to each other, but what these laws are really about are indoctrination. They are about nationalism and patriotism. And a, a healthy society does not ban ideas and it does not ban books. Yeah, I mean, I, let me, I, you, you, you quoted this and I want to read from it because I think it's actually quite revealing. Um, this is, again, from the, the, the Osceola uh, guidance uh, that's sort of under this state law. It says, instruction may not utilize material from the 1619 Project and may not define American history as something other than the creation of a new nation based largely on universal principles stated in the Declaration of Independence. Now, what I find fascinating here is that it's sort of refreshingly forthright and honest. I mean, I grew up in the uh, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and we recited a creed at every mass that declared what we believe. And Osceola is now saying, "This is the creed of Osceola education. Like this is what we believe." What I find maddening is this idea that there's no no ideology behind this. This is just neutral and factual. When in fact, like this is what it is. It's a fight about these very contested, high stakes ideas about what the nature of the country is. Well, this is how propaganda works. It turns terminology on its head so that nothing actually means anything. These laws are being passed because they said that American school children were being indoctrinated. And so we had to pass these laws to ensure American children would get an accurate rendering of history, when, of course, these laws are seeking indoctrination, because what they're saying is there's only one way to talk about American history, and if you aren't going to talk about American history in that way, then you can't talk about American history at all. They're also very intentionally vague. What does that mean, that American history can only be taught if it's saying that we were founded on these fundamental ideals? Well, American history is not just about the period of the revolution. And so what we're seeing, of course, in Florida, a professor of civil rights had his training, teacher training, canceled because it was believed that it was coming in contact with the critical race theory law. We're seeing books like the story of Linda Menendez, which was one of the first school desegregation uh, suits in the country, being pulled. We're seeing books about students who... Uh, children who are gay being pulled. So they are so vague as they can be used to challenge anything. And now we are um, creating laws that are encouraging parents to report their teachers, um, to spy on teachers, to try to lure teachers into teaching something that can be used against them, and encouraging students to do this to their, to their teachers. This is an environment that's not conducive for learning. I know you have children. I have a daughter. I send my daughter to school to get an education that doesn't simply confirm her worldview, but that challenges her, that makes her think differently about the world, that brings different perspectives. Um, and when we hear these laws are for parents, it's very clear which parents. They're not talking about black and brown parents. They're not talking about progressive white parents. They're not talking about parents of children who are queer. They're talking about one particular type of parent who they are, um, 
putting on top and favoring over every other parent. This is not the sign, like I said, of a healthy democracy. And Timothy Snyder, in the, in the piece that he wrote for the New York Times Magazine, really cites these laws as memory laws. And he says that you see these types of laws being passed in countries that are veering towards authoritarianism. And so when you put that hand in hand with all of the anti-voting laws that are being passed right now, uh, the laws against women's reproductive rights, you see that this is part of a larger strategy that turns Americans against each other, that uses the original wedge issue of race uh, in order to justify policies that are becoming increasingly anti-democratic. Yeah, we should note um, the, the sort of one of the, the most striking examples of this, which came through today, is a county in Tennessee that has banned mouse in schools. That's, of course, the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, graphic novel about the Holocaust, um, which I should note uh, had a profound effect on me as a kid. I know many, many people for whom that book was seminal, but mind blowing. I mean, one of one of the most effective masterpieces of um, historical education for kids and, you know, again, it comes down to whether the question of who will get a veto over the sensibilities of a curriculum, which, again, I, I want to be very clear, and I think you would agree, that stuff's always going to be contested. I mean, a part, of the, part of the point of the 1619 Project, I think, is that there's no settled question here. This, right. It's going to be contested. But the, the question of who controls what, what is allowed in the parameters of discussion ends up being what we're seeing on display here now. Absolutely. Trust me, there were books that I read when I was a student or that we were assigned when I was a student that I wasn't comfortable with. There are texts always that parents don't agree with. And parents have a say. Parents have always had a say. People have always contested what students are learning. But what we're seeing now is quite different. To see state legislatures actually prohibiting yeah. ideas that they don't like to say you can't even talk about this country as fundamentally racist what if you the teacher doesn't even believe that it's true but it's just saying this is a school of thought that other americans believe in or there is an entire um area of study that you can no longer introduce students to um that is not the type of education that we should be wanting for our children and chris these laws are not only about k-12 for instance in wisconsin uh, the legislature there is considering one of these anti-CRT law that would also prohibit the 1619 Project and critical race theory from being taught at the college level. That is obscene, but that is where we are in this country. Um, we are not just seeing this in southern states. I know people like to write off the South as, as somehow uh, uniquely backwards. That's not the case. We are seeing this spread all across the country. This is a moral panic. And moral panics are always very dangerous. Yeah. Um, I, I, I find it perplexing. But I will say, what I so appreciated about your opening was I think parents and, and students are waking up. The opposition who has pushed yeah. for these laws has been extremely well organized. 